Hi pet lovers, thank you for joining Gina's grooming channel. Today's discussion is going to be on how to use shampoo like a pro. So using shampoo like a pro. Now some of you may be scratching your head saying it's shampoo. I mean, isn't it the most basic thing in the world? We just put the shampoo on a wet dog, we lather it up, we rinse off, that's it. Repeat as necessary, right? Well, I'll tell you this, anytime you're dealing with any type of profession, things get a little more complicated. And in the professional grooming profession, shampoo does get a little more complex. Uh, I also want to mention that there are some regulatory and safety issues with the storage of shampoo. This is not only going to affect the health and wellness of the pets in your care if you do store your shampoo wrong, um, you also have regulatory problems. So we have inspectors coming in, health inspectors, animal control. So they're going to be looking at how you as a professional are storing your shampoo. So definitely uh, look to the end of the video for that storage information. I'm going to go ahead and index in the description below exactly where where we discuss the storage so if you know how to use shampoo but still want to know what uh, regulatory compliance issues there are and safety issues there are with the storage of professional shampoo i'm going to go ahead and put that down in the description so you can go ahead and jump to that section now even though this discussion is using shampoo like a pro we are going to be releasing a discussion on choosing shampoo like a pro that merits its own discussion there's a lot to talk about um, with that so make sure you stay tuned for that for all of you who have subscribed thank you so much for any of you who are watching this video and want to be notified when our choosing uh, shampoo like a pro comes out make sure that you subscribe and click that bell icon to be notified now I'm going to start with a very important point and this applies to pro groomers uh, using professional products and to home groomers um, that are using shampoo at home is to know that shampoo has a shelf life. It is not a forever thing. So when you open a bottle of shampoo, a timer starts ticking. And I will say this, even if you don't open a bottle of shampoo and it's a decade after, don't use that shampoo. Shampoo definitely has a shelf life. It's usually in the one year, 18 months, two year kind of a range. And again, when you open the shampoo, that clock starts ticking. So if you're not using a shampoo very often, you might not want to go ahead and buy a gallon size. And we'll talk about a gallon size and go for a smaller bottle if you're not using it uh, that often, because just know that once the shampoo expires, it can start breaking down chemically, right? Um, so that is not a good thing. We don't really know. We can't really predict what it's going to do. Um, a lot of reports on broken down shampoo is that it can cause itchiness and irritation. So we have to make sure not to put expired shampoo on the pets in our care. So there are a few ways that professional groomers use shampoo. A lot of groomers use what is called a bathing system, right? Uh, so this is a pre-mixed system. There's different variations of bathing systems, but the general idea is that you're going to have pre-mixed shampoo and water, and you're also going to have a mechanism which allows it to shoot through the coat a little more thoroughly, right? Than manually just going ahead and soaping up a dog. So uh, for any of you interested in bathing systems, I'm going to go ahead and reference an article. It is from 2014, a little outdated, but uh, the information in there is still very relevant to the top players out there uh, for bathing systems so I'm gonna go ahead and put the link down below in the description of this video so you can go ahead and read that article if you're interested in learning about bathing systems now the other option that we all have right home groomers or professional groomers is just to buy a bottle of shampoo and use it full strength uh, now some of the shampoos that we do use in a professional environment that may be medicated we do use full strength but that is not our regular uh, modus operandi right and I'm going to explain to you why in a second um, but the other reason we may use um, an undiluted uh, shampoo straight from the bottle uh, is if an owner brings in a special shampoo for their pet so that's really the times that we're going to be using a um, an undiluted shampoo. So for the most part, for groomers that do not have a bathing system, and you'll see this a lot with mobile groomers or uh, small uh, groomers that have a private practice, uh, we don't do as much volume to merit the cost of a bathing system. So what we do is we buy gallons, okay, of the shampoos that we, I'm going to talk about choosing them in another episode, but our chosen shampoos, right, and then we dilute them according to their dilution rate. Um, so I'm going to talk about that in much more detail, but we're going to go ahead and dilute it in a mixing bottle. So this is the way that most groomers go ahead and mix their shampoos if they don't have a bathing system. 
And I do want to mention that diluting in a mixing bottle serves a few great purposes. So it makes it much more cost effective. Um, and this is for you home groomers who are listening. If you are bathing your dog a lot at home or you have multiple dogs that you are doing a lot of home grooms, you may want to consider looking at a gallon um, of professional shampoo that is diluted. Uh, that could be a lot more cost effective. But again, remember that shelf life. So don't buy a gallon if you're only going to be using it a few times a year. That doesn't make sense for you. But if you are bathing on a regular basis, even home grooming, right, this might make a lot more sense to you in the cost effective arena. I also will mention that diluting and putting the shampoo into a mixing bottle allows us to shoot the shampoo through the coat much more effectively, right, than having to gob on, right, uh, just this kind of viscous shampoo um, and put it on the dog. So this allows us to kind of squeeze the shampoo into the coat while we're going ahead and shampooing, making it a lot more thorough and a lot faster. So let's go into some of the selections that uh, I use on a regular um, and uh, we'll talk about dilution rates and I'm going to show you how to go ahead and dilute these properly. Uh, so two of uh, the shampoos that I use on a really regular basis are from a company called EnviroGroom. I'm going to talk to you guys why I chose these guys about eight years ago to be some of my primary players, not only in large luxury environments, but also in my private practice. Um, really great shampoos, but the deep clean shampoo. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and show you that this is a, a concentrate of 50 to one dilution. And I'm going to talk about what that means in a second. Okay. So our deep clean shampoo from EnviroGroom is 50 to one. Okay. Our hypoactive, this is a hypoallergenic shampoo from EnviroGroom as well. This dilution rate is a 30 to one dilution. Okay. And then uh, this is one of my favorite brightening shampoos from Kelco called uh, Face Off um, from Dirty Dog Kelco. Basically, um, this is an eight to one dilution. And within those dilution, we have some flexibility depending on how dirty a dog is. Uh, so it's not kind of written in stone, but just know that for certain shampoos, you're gonna have different dilution rates. So now that we know the rates, what does this really mean? Okay, so the 50 to one means 50 parts water, to one part shampoo. This is incredibly efficient shampoo. So when you're looking at a mixing bottle, this is a mixing bottle I'm gonna show you that doesn't have any lines. When we're talking about a 50 to one, you're talking about barely hitting the bottom. Now I'm gonna show you that there are different types of mixing bottles out there for professionals as well. Um, this one actually shows you the lines of where the uh, dilution rates should be. This one doesn't even go to 50 to one, um, but basically this is showing you if you did the water first, you would go up to the line, right? And 50 to one, so 20 to one is here. So you can tell 50 to one uh, from coming from the bottom to the top. If you did water first, I do shampoo first, um, but if you did water first, your 50 to one on this bottle would be right at the edge, top there. Okay, and then you have other mixing bottles that actually show you the mix ratio down in lines right below. So this is more my style, which is I put the shampoo in and then I put the water in. That helps me mix it. Um, so you can see right here, the lowest line is 22 to one. So with our 50 to one, okay, we're kind of going half, more than half of that. Okay, so it's gonna be um, actually less down this line here. So really, really, we're just coating the bottom with our 50 to one. Okay, so for our 31 using the same principle, okay, again, if we're not using one with lines, you kind of have to do it by eye. Um, it's not a super exact science, so don't stress about you know using an eyedropper to make sure that you are exactly on that line. It's just gonna give you a general idea. But so for our hypoactive, for a 30 to one, so again, this is a 20 to one is our highest level right here. So just know that the 30 to one is gonna be a little bit more shampoo than the 50 to one, but somewhere in between that line. So for our face off, our dirty dog face off, this is an eight to one. Um, this one, let's go ahead, take a look at the line. Okay, that's eight to one. And then we follow the line and this is where we're gonna put in the shampoo and then the rest is gonna be up to the fill line with water. Okay, so now once we filled according to the right ratio, right, our right dilution ratio, there's a few ways that we can mix. I'm gonna show you that I do a spin the bottle. I don't know if you guys ever uh, remember being in junior high school, but uh, I go ahead and spin the bottle on the bottom of the uh, tub. That gives me a really nice fast way to go ahead and mix the bottle and not to go ahead and create too many suds. It's just a really smooth little spin the bottle, right? And then that shampoo is ready to go. 
Now remember I mentioned when we're using the uh, diluted bottles, we're squeezing that shampoo into the coat. So much, much more efficient, much faster, gets really into the root and to the skin and uh, helps us really, once we're done, doing that quick shampoo with the diluted solution, we can go ahead and uh, scrub that dog up, lather him up, right? And then we have to make sure that we rinse thoroughly. So I just always, anytime I'm dealing with any kind of a bathing lecture or any kind of a shampoo lecture, I always wanna stress the importance of rinsing your pet really, really thoroughly because if you don't rinse shampoo or any product off a pet that's not supposed to be leave on, you can definitely cause some skin issues. So make sure that all of your pets are rinsed really, really well. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about proper storage. So there's gonna be the proper storage of your shampoo. Um, okay, so the biggest thing to know, I mean, obviously you wanna follow the temperature rules for the shampoo that you're not putting it in an excessive heat or excessive cold, um, but you also wanna make sure that you always, always, always throughout your day, you keep the lid closed. It's really important because if you keep the lid open and water gets into the shampoo, it can go ahead and create basically a, a still water layer, right? So you have still water sitting on top of the shampoo. And what happens in still water? A lot of bad things can happen, including bacteria. So you can actually create a little pool of bacteria, right? With still water in a shampoo bottle if you don't close it. So make sure you know to close your shampoo bottle even in the middle of the day, especially in the middle of the day, when you've got water flying around, you wanna go ahead and make sure that these guys stay really nice and tight and closed. Now, the other thing I wanna mention is the storage for the mixing bottles. This is what the health inspector looks at when they come into your facility, at least in California, in the state of California. They are looking to see how you are storing these guys after you use them. The most important thing you need to know, just like we discussed with the shampoos, you want to make sure that you have no resting water, no still water sitting in, on the bottom of these bottles, right? Because bacteria and other nasty things can form. And I have seen what happens when bacteria gets on the dog's skin. It's not good. We have to make sure that we safeguard uh, ourselves to make sure that we don't use anything that has bacteria on a dog's skin. So we do at the end of the day, at the end of the use of the bottle, you want to go ahead and make sure you store it with the cap off, upside down, so that it drains, obviously over a drain <laughs> where you can store it, so that it drains and dries overnight. So once it's dry, then it's ready to use for your next pet the next day. Make sure that you store these guys upside down. Well, okay, guys, that's about it. I uh, hope this gives you some insight into how to use shampoo like a pro. Again, stay tuned for our choosing shampoo like a pro. There's a lot of good stuff that we need to talk about in there. But guys, if you have any questions, feel free to put them down below in the comments. Uh, thank you so much for clicking that thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe for more like it, and we will see you soon. Thanks.